Here are seven things that don't sell you print on demand price. This video is perfect for you if you are a beginner because what I've found after teaching hundreds of students is they spend a lot of time on things that don't move the needle. And by move the needle, I mean making money for you faster. Number one is the reviews. I've started stores with a bang and reviews haven't mattered. Now, when you capture emotion in just the right way, you can trust your supplier is going to deliver a top quality product, especially if you've done your due diligence. Your supplier has a duty of care to make sure that the products that they're offering do stack up because they know if they offer too many bad products, they're not going to stay in business for long. And when you work with suppliers like Printify, they provide a star rating for the suppliers they work with. So you can rest assured the ones that you choose, nine times out of 10, you're going to have top quality products showing up to your customers. So instead of focusing on the reviews, what you can do instead, focus on creating unique products that stand out and capture the human emotion. Unique products sell. And the more products you sell, the more reviews you're gonna naturally make. The next thing not to worry about is the shipping times. So long as you're transparent and you share expected shipping times, your customers will wait. The thing is you've created a desirable product that they have to have. It's up to you to sell the benefit of waiting. When I first started my sneaker store that did $500,000 in six months, my customers were waiting up to three weeks. The way I managed that was by going above and beyond with the customer experience, letting them know every step of the way what's happening with their product and responding to any questions that came through immediately when I got them. So instead of saying you have to wait three weeks for a product, say you take great pride in the products you are selling and each one is made one by one specifically for that person, which means they often take a little longer to get. Next up, lack of product similarity or need similarity on your stores. General stores on Etsy are fine to get your feet wet. It allows you to explore opportunities, find your success, get confident and profitability into your business before you get into the paid marketing on Meta. Once you've discovered those winning products, it allows you to start focusing your store and gives you that confidence to know that the products you're creating for the niche that you've chosen have a really good chance of selling and ultimately it shapes the direction that your store will take. Instead of worrying about the niche store versus general store debate, just get started. If you see an opportunity, jump on it. Don't get stuck and not open a store because you can't decide whether or not a general store or a niche store is the right way to go. Done is better than perfect. Next, Visa Designs are not what sells your product. Simple sells, whether it's on Etsy or Shopify, keep those designs simple. Less is more, and that's because it's the words on your products nine times out of 10 that is what captures your audience's attention that makes that sale. So the focus must go on what actually makes people click that add to cart button. Pretty flowers and design embellishments actually take away from your product, not add to it. People aren't buying amazing works of art, they're buying the words. Instead, use bolder, easier to read fonts with limited colors and design embellishments. Niche cues can help, like little silhouettes that depict for the niche exactly who it's for, but avoid overdoing it. Get a handful of templates created and just get designing. Be mindful not to pigeonhole yourself by using the product type in your actual business name. I did that once and the problem was it made it very difficult for me to test any products outside that's focused one in my business name. Another thing, you want to avoid the hyphens or a business name that's too long that it's forgettable. The thing is, I've seen many instances of the weirdest business names making sales and very good sales at that. Shoeish3505 or Gift Shop 293 The reason why they were still successful was because they were capturing human emotion in the designs that they were selling. Instead of overthinking your business name, just use a tool like name links or add a random name like a child's name to sunset like Keels and Molly or Keels and Sunset. Next up and one that so many people get hung up on is the price. Contrary to popular belief, price does not sell print on demand products. POD is about hitting human emotion, nostalgia, belonging, humor, individuality, sentimentality, pride, scarcity, empowerment, love and affection, curiosity, or comfort. Next, stop worrying about a lack of products in your store. As I mentioned previously, I've started many stores with a bang with very minimal products on there. That means no more than half a dozen published products, no reviews, no warming up of ad accounts. Focus on the consistency of batch creating your designs, uploading and running those ads 
because through the process, you are warming up that ad account and you are building a bigger and bigger catalog week on week. It's just important to stay consistent. Before long, your store is gonna be brimming with products. The reason for this is because the one product that you advertise to the audience brought them to your store. 99% of the time, they're going to buy the product that they click. So instead of creating 100 products and not having them anywhere where people can buy, create five designs, upload and publish, run ads on Meta or optimize on Etsy and respond to the data that's coming in. This allows you to find your success much faster by working with good quality data. If you batch launch 100, you may have spent time in completely different niches on products that just don't connect and ultimately do not sell. By batch creating five products at a time, you're continually immersing yourself in the data, the add to carts, the favorites, the likes, the purchases that people are making on those products. That is gold because when these actions are taking place, you know by focusing in that direction on that niche with different variations of designs, you're zeroing in on that success. You're zeroing in on finding winning products that take off and make you a hell of a lot of money. Now, if you'd love my personal guidance and the step-by-step -step roadmap to creating a $5,000 to $10,000 per month print-on-demand business in as little as two hours a day so you can create that time, freedom, and financial independence, then make sure you check out Podhacks, my coaching program. You can click it with the first link in the description below. There, watch the quick training. And if you love the sound of it, make sure you book a call with my team and I, and I'll have a chat to you over there. Instead of trying to sell a shirt for $9 and click baiting people into actually clicking your listing. And by the way, that only works if you're direct copying a listing that you're seeing. Sell it for the recommended retail price that your supplier is giving you. And then just add a compare at price so your customer does feel like they're getting a bit of a deal. Doesn't mean you have to strip all the profitability from the product you're actually selling. That way your customer still feels like they're getting a discount but they're getting the product that they ultimately want and that's a new unique design they haven't seen before. Think I've missed anything? Make sure you let me know below. And if you wanna see how I'm using AI to make profitable phone cases, make sure you watch this video next.